Welcome to the neighboring islands of Lolland, Falster, Lille and Fejø in the southernmost point of Denmark. The special climatic and soil conditions in this region has provided the basis for an extensive sugar production and turned the islands into Denmark's largest supplier of stones and poems. I was myself born and brought up on Lolland. A couple of years ago, I felt an urge to get involved in the cultivation and refinement of Danish fruit. Therefore, I bought an orchard with my family with old apple, prune and pear trees here on the island of Lille. You can press them and then you get apple must. That is delicious. If you ferment the must, you get apple wine. If you re-ferment the wine, you get apple cider. If you distill the apple wine, you're left with uh, apple snaps or apple brandy. But if you expose the apple wine to uh, acetic acid bacteria, which are naturally present in the air, you end up with apple cider vinegar. And what I'm in the process of doing in this room is an additional refinement of the fruit vinegar model on Modena's balsamic tradition. I've actually mixed apple cider vinegar with reduced must from apples and prunes and will now be maturing these juices in barrels made from different types of wood, such as cherry, oak and ash. And uh, some of the balsamic vinegar will be bottled after a year or two, whereas other barrels will be cracked open by my daughters at a time where I am no longer. The main cooking today will be a smoked eel with a salad of Jerusalem artichokes, summer apples and rye kernels. We'll make green crab bisque and then I'll show you how to make a wonderful punch based on the juices from local sugar beets. In a while, you'll meet my friend, the gastro entrepreneur Kai Winter from Kernegorn. But first of all, we'll make a beautiful apple pie with apple syrup and cider. In Denmark, we make most of our apple pies in late autumn when we harvest firm varieties of apples, such as Brandy Seedling, Belle de Boscop, Cox Orange, and our national favorite. Ingel Marie, which all have also a very pronounced acidity, which goes very well with uh, sugar, butter, and so forth. But today I'll show you that you can also use summer varieties such as Gulbok. It is a juicy, sweet apple with an aroma of strawberries and raspberries. The idea of the cake is to combine a beautiful dough made with uh, loads of fresh hazelnuts and marinated apples. So two liters of apple must. And one uh, deciliter of apple cider. If you don't have any, then you can also use somewhat less apple cider vinegar. And then a spoon of this Wonderful apple flower honey. And a little vanilla. The salt of the sweet kitchen. And now we just uh, leave it for 15 minutes. And in the meanwhile, we can make the hazelnut dough. They look like this. And um, I usually just break them with my hand. It's very easy, if you're strong like me. I will chop them finely so they can bind the butter. 375 grams.
This is good. I don't want it to get powder. Like this. And then the bottom. 220 grams. 75 grams of flour. And two eggs and two egg whites. And 375 grams of sugar. Mmm, it's perfect. Look at this wonderful texture. Smooth, creamy. I just grease the spring form so that uh, I can get the cake out afterwards. And I want all of it down here because I want to add a lot of apples. For this amount of hazelnuts, I use 1.5 kilos of apples. That's about three pounds. Don't add too much of the juice. Now, I have to bake it for 45 to 50 minutes at uh, 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius. And now to the syrup that we'll use to glaze the cake when it comes out of the oven. The only thing you have to do to make this wonderful apple syrup is to uh, reduce this liquid until it gets syrupy. Now the syrup. Just pour it uh, all over the top of the cake. It's ready. I hope Kai will enjoy it. What kind of apples do you actually use for the cider? Uh, we did import uh, some French cider apples and did make the plantation out here in uh, 2003. Where we, we did fall in love with the French way of producing the farm cider. Some of them are very, very bitter and some of them are bittersweet and uh, some of them are also very, very sweet. So there are big difference uh, compared to Danish. What is very important for our cider is we are not using any yeast, water, sugar or carbon dioxide. This is the authentic French farm cider way of producing. Okay. The Maribor lakes are the cleanest and clearest in Denmark. You paddle past Gothic cathedrals, Baroque gardens and ruins of castles from a bygone era. Knudenborg Safari Park is Northern Europe's largest animal and landscape park situated on more than 460 hectares of land. The castle of Vindholm is situated quietly between large cypress trees and old oak trees in a Papifolius lime tree forest. Count Ferdinand and Ravenau built the castle in 1910. Yes. I know.
crabs have uh, never been as abundant in Danish waters as right now. There are billions of them. Experts uh, estimate that a total of uh, around 100,000 tons. The green crabs uh, are already beginning to look like an export fairy tale in that they, due to technological achievements, are being uh, successfully transported to parts in the Far East where there is a tremendous demand for shellfish of every kind. Hand fishes. The Danish climate is generally highly favorable towards apple cultivation. In our region, apples grow close to their northern cultivation border, and therefore they develop a higher aromatic intensity and a more pronounced acidity than when cultivated in the south. Lille is one of Denmark's smallest inhabited islands. The three farms on the island, Lundgård, Vejlegård and Vimosegård, have been growing pears apples and plums commercially for more than 70 years. The total area is today 20 hectares and yearly 250,000 kilos of fruit is harvested. Many of the trees are more than 20 years old and there is no irrigation on Lille. The trees have to make do with the precipitation granted by nature. This makes for a slightly smaller yield than on traditional plantations but the fruit is very tasty. In the preceding years, we have been planting older fruit varieties and today we are growing more than 50 different types of apples, pears and plums. We do not expect large yields. It is difficult to harvest at the right time. Old varieties typically peak for a shorter period of time, but we have great expectations with regard to the taste of varieties such as Philippa, Rød Ananas, James Reeve and Ancient Gostein. Sugar is a natural product which all plants produce as part of photosynthesis. The sun is the driving force behind the process and therefore you could claim that sugar is a form of harnessed solar energy. As long as we have known about man's habits and behavior, we know that we have loved anything sweet. For thousands of years, the most common sweeteners were honey and uh, sugar reduces from plants and fruits. But in the beginning of the 1800s in Germany, they discovered that uh, sea beets contain large amounts of sugar. Sugar beets are harvested in September and October. After washing and slicing the beets, the so-called crude sugar is extracted using warm water. The juice is reduced in large vats to a treacly thick juice. The sugar is crystallized from the juice, centrifuged and dried, leaving the white sugar. The residual products, beet fiber and pulp, are used to make, for instance, dietary fiber and animal feed. You cannot really say that the white refined Nordic sugar is any better or more elegant than golden cane sugar, but in some contexts, the great thing is that it will strengthen the sweetness of a dish and enhance aromas without in any way mixing with them. I always wondered why the only thing we make out of this wonderful beet juice is white refined sugar. And the other day I asked the question at the local sugar refinery and uh, they gave me this. Three delicious specialty sugars which are still in the development phase and which contain the aromatic salts, the organic acids and the uh, delicious caramel components from the sugar beet refinement process. And look at this black, beautiful Nordic sugar beet syrup. I'm sure it'll be good in my punch and uh, that one could make a lovely Nordic brown rum out of it. Often when we have picked apples here on the island, the cool 
autumn day we go inside and uh, make uh, my favorite punch and um, this punch is based on apples and uh, beets I take uh, half a liter of beet juice and then an equal amount of apple must cold pressed cinnamon star anise and just a few cloves and then to achieve a mature taste we need to add some alcohol and uh, I use aquavit bring it to the boil and uh, that's because I want to extract the flavors from the spices now I think it's I think it's hot and the good thing about this punch is that it is good when it is hot but it is just as good when it is cold mm. it's delicious and you know what the spices come out beautifully now and when it is cold the sweetness is less pronounced and therefore it's wonderful served as an aperitif with ice cubes. And now to the crab bisque where the main ingredient is these little monsters, green crabs. Be aware of them. They want to steal your eyes and bite your nose. But hold them like this and they're in trouble. The other part of the soup is the vegetable base and it's very simple. Onions, celery or parsley, garlic, ginger, an apple and uh, beautiful tomatoes. Chop it finely and I'll show you what to do afterwards. And now to the crabs. Hold it firmly with your knife like this and then cut it quickly with one swift movement. Be sure you don't throw away all these beautiful juices. It gives your fish a wonderful flavor. Some good oil. And then the crabs, but not the juices. I want them to fry, not to boil. I want a caramelization that brings out the flavors from this wonderful little shellfish. Now you add a little paprika to bring some heat. And then the root vegetables and the onions. I still wanted to fry a little and therefore I don't add the tomatoes or the apples. And I don't add the ginger nor the parsley because the flavors will be destroyed if I fry them. Now look here, when uh, the color of the crabs have changed from darkish blue to orange red, it's time to add the juicy elements and you start with the vinegar. Half a deciliter and you let it evaporate. And then the cider. Half a liter of cider. And now the watery vegetables. Tomatoes, apples, the ginger that I didn't want to burn and the parsley. And why not a little thyme? and I want this to become a soup. And there's only one thing I can add, and that is water. And then of course, the crab juices. And some pepper. And now I just leave it here for 45 to 50 minutes. And now to the eel. This is a smoke deal. We need to remove the skin and the bones. First, cut off the head. And then you cut alongside the backbone. Then you remove the, the breast bones and this brown part here. This is the caviar of Lollan in southern Denmark. Just remove the fat. Now isn't that beautiful? 
proper pieces for the salad. This is broken rye kernels and I will cook them like rice in a combination of water and uh, apple must. So two parts of water. And one part apple must. And a little salt. Now we bring it to the boil and cook it for 14 minutes. And in the meanwhile, we can prepare the vegetables. And the first one is this beautiful little thing, the Jerusalem artichoke. I love it because you can bake it in the oven or you can cut it thinly and uh, turn it into chips. You can cook it like potatoes or you can use it raw in a salad. And then we need some apples. And this is the Danish national apple called Grosdane. It came about by seeding back in the late uh, 18th century. You can always recognize it by its uh, rather rustic shape. And um, I must tell you, this is one of the best cooking apples in the world. Apple cider vinegar, balsamic style, a little cold pressed rapeseed oil, pepper, and salt. And then a little horseradish that will stimulate your sense of pain in the mouth and bring heat to the salad. And our magic powder. First the chive. Chop it as fine as you can. Black pepper. Loads of it because it counterbalances the fatness of the eel. And then my magic product. Namely this wonderful sugar. Let's have a look at the rye kernels. And the rye kernels are ready. Now the eel. And the island is full of blackberries. They will cut through the eel with their heavy acidity and uh, I love the color. And now my little magic powder, this wonderful black pepper chive and unrefined beet sugar relish. And some fresh chive to top it off. And look at this, the eel is done. Let's check the soup. And let's sieve it. Now tamp the shells and the vegetables to press out all these wonderful juices. Now when you make soup it's very important to balance the taste in the end. Mm. It's a very good fruity flavor, but uh, it definitely needs salt, pepper, and uh, also a little vinegar to give some freshness. Mmm, now this is good. I would even say as good as any lobster soup in the world. The only thing is that this one is so much cheaper. There's a go. My two favorite beverages for this soup are Kai's lovely cider from Fire and then a good lager. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
for glassene. Det er da utroligt.